Hi guys, and welcome to your first AP Biology video lesson. I'm Mr. LaForge, and I'm glad to welcome you to your first opportunity to take what is really a college class in high school. So I've made this video in order to give you some basic information about how this class works, what we do on a given day, and how the grading works. So in order to truly understand AP Biology, um, you need to realize that you guys were selected as some of the best students here at CI. Um, you're selected from either my physical science honors class that I had last year, uh, Mr. Lucas's or Mr. Haynes's physical science class, or you're selected from Mr. Martinez or Mr. Blumenthal or another one of the um, earth science classes. And in order to understand what I understand what I expect for you this year, you need to realize that things have completely changed. Last year in Earth Science, you were supposed to do really well on the Earth Science CST. You were supposed to get an advanced or a proficient because you're really smart. But the problem is that that's not what we're doing anymore. We will have a CST next year on Biology and Life Science, but compared to what we have to do next year, it's nothing. Instead, our goal is the AP test. Okay, now the AP test is actually given outside of class. You do have to sign up for it. It costs a little bit of extra money, so be prepared for that. It does cost um, about $80 if you don't have free and reduced lunch, and if you are on free and reduced lunch, it costs about $5 because you get a fee waiver. Now, to understand this test, you have to understand that goal. Um, the goal is to receive college credit. That's what it's all about. You want college credit for biology. In order to get college credit, you have to score a 5, a 4, or a 3 on the exam. If you get a 2 or a 1, you don't get college credit. Now, the way that the test works is that the 5 is supposed to be like getting an A in a college class. 4 is like getting a B, 3 is like getting a C, 2 is like getting a D, and 1 is like getting an F. And that's why D and F don't give you credit. Now this test is a big deal. It's a much bigger deal than any test you've probably taken before. Because on the AP test, you have 25,000 people from across the world that are going to take this test on the same day. And you're going to be compared against them. So the way that it's set up is that only about 51% of people who take the AP test actually receive college credit, a 5, a 4, or a 3. So no matter how great you are, you have to be better than about, about 13,000 other people across the world in order to get that college credit. So this is a highly competitive thing. And that's why this class has to be much more difficult than other classes you've had in the past. Now, the AP test has a bunch of sections, and that'll also help you understand why our class does the things that it does. So first of all, we have multiple choice, a multiple choice section on the AP test. There are 63 multiple choice questions, and these are not simple multiple choice questions. They have lots of reading, and a lot of times it looks kind of like what you might see on an English test, where you have a very long reading section, and then several multiple choice questions on that. But it's not just about reading, it's about reading related to science and understanding data and even sometimes doing math related to that data. The next section is the grid in answers. These are the mathematical calculations. So you'll actually do some math on the AP Bio test. And there's six of these questions, but that doesn't mean there's only six math questions. Math is scattered throughout the entire exam. These two pieces are connected together in one 90-minute session. After that, you have another 90-minute session, which is the free response questions. There are four free response questions. Two of them are long free response, where you basically write an essay about scientific data, and two are short free response, more of a short answer type question. So like I said, this is 90 minutes also. So because of this, because of all the reading, all the writing, all the data analysis that's on the AP test, 
Those are the things we'll be doing in this class. Lots of reading, lots of writing, and lots of labs so we can practice analyzing data. So overall, the format of this class is broken down into two things. The things you're going to learn, the things you're going to do. So the way that you're going to learn information in this class is pretty much by watching video lessons. And you'll do those video lessons at home. Every time you do a video lesson, you'll fill out a Google form, which lets me see how well you understood the video. It also, by the way, lets me see when you watched the video. And so doing your homework the day of that it's due is not going to fly in this class. You have to do it the night before. You have to be prepared. And in fact, I have to get greater than 80% of my students to complete each of those Google Forms. If you don't, if 79% of people complete the assignment, there will be a quiz the next day without any warning. Okay, so you've got to make sure we need everybody doing their work in this class. Now, once you've completed the video in the form, that allows me to create a quick lesson that will review anything you're having trouble with. So we'll do review lessons in class. The other thing we'll do in class is you'll read from your textbook and other materials that I give you. You'll also work on assignments and practice questions. Okay. Lastly, you'll do a lot of practice with being a scientist. So we'll be doing lots of labs in this class. Labs take up about 25% of our time. And these are not easy, fun labs. That's not the goal. The goal is to do real, serious science in this class. And so, each lab takes about six days, requires you to do math, graphing, data analysis, and to write an extensive lab report. There's about 8 to 13 labs, so that's about 8 to 13 lab reports this year. That's probably way more writing than you would do even in an English class. And I'll go way more in depth about how the lab report is written in another video after this one. Finally, let's talk about how you get your grades. So, in this class, you know, you've got your video lessons that you're going to do for homework. So your video lessons are 15% of your grade, and those are graded basically on completion. So if you did the work, then you get the points. Um, another 15% is your classwork. Now, when you're in class, I expect your work to be correct. So this is graded on correctness, not just completion. Um, after that, you have to do your lab reports. Lab reports are worth about 20% of your grade. And the first lab report you're actually going to be doing with sample data that I provided on my website. And you'll be doing that as your summer assignment. So the first day of school, you're going to be turning in your first lab report. The other thing you're going to be graded on is unit tests. So each unit test is worth, or the unit tests all together, are worth 50% of the grade. And this system of grading the unit tests is a little bit different um, from other classes that you've probably taken. Um, the way that the unit tests work in this class is that on the first test, so test one, you'll have 10 questions. And obviously, they'll be from unit one, right? On the second test, you'll have 20 questions. And by the way, you have the same amount of time. So you've got twice as many questions still in only one class period. That's still lots of time. But as we add more and more questions, it starts to become more of a time crunch. That's because the AP test is timed. And one of the biggest problems is accidentally running out of time. So you, test two has 20 questions. 10 of those are from unit one as a review. And 10 of them are brand new from unit two. Test three, as you can imagine, has 30 questions. And once again, 10 of them will be from unit one. 
10 of them will be from unit 2, and 10 of them will be from unit 3. So that means that you're not allowed to forget anything in this class. Also, let's say you did really well on the unit 1 questions on the first test, and you got like a 5, right? You did great. Well, the next time you have a test, you'll be retested on unit 1. And let's say you didn't prepare as well this time. You got a 4 on the unit 1 questions, and you got a 5 on the unit 2 questions. Remember, 5 is the highest score you can get. Well, this score from unit 1 before, it's dis it disappears. And now your score for unit 1 goes down to a 4. So if you want to be perfect in this class, you have to remain perfect. You have to keep all that information in your brain because it's what matters at the end of the year when you get to the AP test that matters, not what you know at the beginning of the year. So I look forward to actually meeting you guys in person. I'm looking for a little bit of information about you, so please fill out the Google form underneath and submit that. Um, if not, we're going to have a quiz on it, on this information, on the first day. So if you're doing this way ahead of time, you might want to re-watch this video before you come back to school. And I hope you guys have a great summer and that I see you soon.